All right, ladies and gentlemen, how are you guys doing on this Monday, December 7th, 2020? Welcome to another Metallic episode of Music of Destruction, bringing you the best in metal-related content right here on YouTube. If you missed anything in the past week, click that eye in the upper right corner of the screen, get caught up on all my latest videos, I would appreciate it. Drop a comment down below if there's anything you'd like to see me review or cover. No slam or deathcore, I don't enjoy those genres. I want to welcome you guys to Album Review Tuesdays once again here on the channel. And tonight, we are going into Germany with Ahab, The Call of the Wretched Sea, released in 2006 on Napalm Records. German Nautic Funeral Doom, guys. One of the best fucking albums of all time, but we're going to get into that. Now, if you're wondering where the name of the band came from ahab is the captain of the pequod the whaler who is hunting for the white whale moby dick in the book of the same name by herman melville german nautic funeral doom metal quadru or quad ahab are so infatuated with oceans they had a sticker placed on the call of the wretched sea their 2006 debut that long described their music to inquisitive punters as nautic funeral doom right there even their name drew inspiration from the seafaring tales taking obvious inspiration from herman melville's classic with moby dick of course tales of great woe and you know i mean this is just such a great fucking book and album now melvin's classic tale of the obsessed captain of the pequod who pursued the great white whale of course each recording since this album has carried a nautical theme in its title down through 2015's The Boats of Glen Carrig. Ahab were founded in 2004 in Esslingen, Germany by musicians Minatzol and Penetralia, guitarist, keyboardist, and vocalist Daniel Drodste, guitarist Christian Hector, and Einzeitz, Stefan Adolf on bass and backing vocals. Now they all share a collective obsession with the ocean, of course, and its tales of adventure and destruction. They issued a 12 and a half minute A-side only debut titled The Stream at the end of 2004. They followed in April of 2005 with The Oath, which was a four song demo with three of them clocking in at over 10 minutes long. With Throatste and Hector doing the drum programming, their labyrinth nearly powerful almost glacier funeral dirges treated with punishing sonics caught the ears of punters and music journos across the globe including fans like myself, and eventually the attention of Napalm Records would sign them late that year. Now in 2006 they released this album, The Call of the Wretched Sea, with drums provided by guest Arachnoplans Cornelius Althammer, or er, er, Cranoplans, sorry. He stayed for the touring that followed and was asked to join as a permanent member, which to me is probably one of the greatest things they ever did. Now the critical response from the extreme music community for this album was not only abundant, it was very rapid, with several sources praising them as natural successors to doom progenitors, skepticism and esoteric. How amazing is that? While others claimed them as the 21st century personification of funeral doom metal. The set marked Adolf's final recording with them and tour. He remained on support for touring and shows into 2008 before leaving music altogether for a time. I'm not sure if he's returned to music or not, but he eventually resurfaced as the guitarist for Stillborn and Minatsol. So yeah, he did come back to music. Now the lineup on the Call of the Wretched Seas is as follows. Chris Vector, guitars. Daniel Drodste, vocals, guitars, and keyboards. Cornelius Althammer on drums, and Stefan Wandernoff on the bass. So, let's get into the review now that we got a bio of Ahab. Now, the masterpiece opens with an incredible keyboard passage that immediately reminds you of a deep ocean voyage into the depths of the deep. Nautic ambience and deep dark cold clouds loom overhead as you sail deeper into the darkness and cold beckoning of the sea. The dark ambience gives you visions of being lost at sea with an ever-growing foreboding feeling in your stomach that something really fucking bad is about to take place. Like the waters churning and swirling around your ship and the sail has split from the war-torn winds of the rain and swirling like vapor and all that. And now, you're basically marooned and fucking stranded. Now this ambience continues for 1 minute and 28 seconds before the thunderous drums come in like a thunderclap that knock you so hard into oblivion that it scares the living shit out of you. They crash like vicious waves hitting your boat and capsizing you while you fucking drown. 
The guitars have a hypnotic low dirge tuned funeral doom metal aesthetic that sound just like Moby Dick himself has attacked your vessel and you're slowly sinking into your watery grave. The bass swirls and pulls you under while your lungs fill up with water and you suffocate under this vocal abysmal uh, depressing atmosphere of the, of the music and the vocals and the intensity builds throughout this into a funeral doom crescendo that has crashed and flooded every sense of your fucking being. I seriously cannot believe how much bass there is on this album. It shakes the entire house when I blast the album. It's so goddamn hypnotizing that it literally removes me from the world and I instantly feel like I'm traveling into oblivious nothingness lost at sea with nothing but storm clouds, skin piercing rains, freezing your skin. Now the track closes in further and further for its entire 10 minute and 47 second duration while it prepares you for Moby Dick's inevitable victory as you try to scramble and swim to safety but it absolutely pulls you in and makes it futile to escape. Below the Sun is one of the best funeral doom metal openers I've ever heard on an album. Killer fucking song. Next up we have the Pacific which opens with the most intense cavernous thundering drumming I've ever heard as it crashes literally like the loudest thunderclap I've ever heard in my life. It literally fucking sounds like Thor's hammer striking down on you while you continue along the journey completely lost, cold, alone, and trying to avoid the fucking great Moby Dick. Yes folks, this is literally the journey of Ahab and his battle against the Great Will. Because honestly, that's exactly what the instrumentation, aesthetics, atmosphere, and vocals sound like. Like Moby Dick closing in on you with every second of your of, of time here, ready to devour you at a moment's notice. The drum work on this track is phenomenal and so atmospheric as it perfectly accompanies the guitars, bass, vocals, and keyboards. And the vocals literally sound like the voice of the deepest parts of the watery abyss. Then they create a very disturbing uneasiness throughout this album's entire duration. These elements all work so hard to flawlessly craft an atmosphere that no band to this day has been able to duplicate when it comes to the themes and concepts of Nautic Funeral Doom Metal. In fact, I don't think there are many other bands that who play Nautic Funeral Doom Metal. When one first hears this band, they might be so jaw-dropped that they may not be able to grasp what they are hearing here. Because what we have here is nothing short of some of the most intense, foreboding, dark atmospheric funeral doom metal ever fucking conceived. Though the aesthetics and tempo are obviously of the depressive side of metal, the lyrical themes and concepts are not about the usual funeral doom metal fare. No, this is an album about the horrifying journey of Ahab's battle with Moby Dick, and I certainly don't know how the band pulled off this performance in such a convincing manner with so much emotional depth and conviction, but they fucking did it. This is another amazing track. Next up we have Old Thunder and this just continues the voyage into the black dark sea and foreboding devastating winds of the storm and the opening majestic riffing and cymbal work work both harm harmoniously with this slow somber approach that makes it transition into funeral doom metal but the beauty of this doesn't launch itself on you right away instead this one is a bit more peaceful and the build up is a little bit slower than previous tracks rather than the black ominous darkness of the first two tracks. Yet it definitely picks up its, in its intensity, and this one is a bit of a slower build like I said, but the chaotic intense atmosphere when it hits is like the fucking sky has been ripped open and the sea is parting and Moby Dick has ribbon, risen from the depths of the ocean only to try once again to devour your soul. And I mean, my god, do I ever want to read Moby Dick while I listen to this fucking album. Riffs, drum work, and bass and vocals and keyboards all work together harmoniously and flawlessly to create this battle-like epic atmosphere that make you feel like you're facing Moby Dick's wrath. The atmosphere here is absolutely astounding and unrivaled by many bands in the genre, with the exception of bands like Bellwitch, Nort, Dictator, and Black Bile. Yes, there's lots of others as well, but I personally feel like Ahab is in a league all of their own with this release. I mean, the sheer heaviness of this album alone weighs more than Thor's fucking hammer or the biggest vessel to ever sail the high seas. Instrumentation and production are so fucking deep and cavernous and thunderous that you can feel the bass in your bones as you listen to this. And that's how funeral doom metal should be. 
Increasing tempo shifts on this track give it a strong sense of urgency and panic as well, all while it's suffocating claustrophobic atmosphere of being lost at sea, facing Moby Dick, flawlessly engulf you and keep you entranced for the album's entire 67 minutes of the album without ever getting boring for one second, and that's a really tall feat to accomplish with a Funeral Doom Metal. At least I never got bored of it and never will. Now I understand that Funeral Doom Metal is not going to be for everyone, and of course for most metalheads they like the more up-tempo faster stuff, but for those of us who love the slower atmospheric sides of metal, this is going to be right up your alley. Killer song here as well. Next up we have the dark ambient piece called Pictures of the Monstrous Whales, and this is only two minutes long, but it definitely keeps the atmosphere going of Captain Ahab's quest to slaughter the great Moby Dick, and it's a pretty dark ambient piece at two minutes and serves its intended job. Next up we have the Sermon, which is bled into from the previous track, and this is another chapter of the hunt for the great Moby Dick with thunderous pounding drums, riffs, bass work, and vocals and keyboards that split the earth into two with sick low tuned riffs and bass that will cause the earth itself to fucking crumble and tidal waves to crash ashore with vocals of pure abysmal darkness and foreboding echoing over it all. And this serves well because this track continues to the escapade into the great battle of the sea. And it's got some pretty powerful atmosphere and hypnotic qualities that make it so hard to pull away from the album. And I feel every goddamn ounce of emotion and atmosphere that this album provides. And the sincerity that's being expressed here is unrivaled, as well as the tonality and the goal of this album, as it's clearly projecting the uncertainty of the sea and the reality that Captain Ahab faced while hunting for the great Moby Dick. Now this literally sounds like a battle sermon or in the moments leading up to the countless battles and encounters with the great whale. And each song is clearly a chapter of these events and the instrumentation just does such a hell of a job of conveying the visions and the theme of this that I keep alluding to. But this is only because I want to emphasize just how incredible this atmosphere really is. I don't know if there are many metal albums of 2006 that would even come close to this. In fact, I'd be hard pressed to find any. Great fucking track here as well. Next up we have The Hunt, and yes ladies and gentlemen, the end of the battle is coming, and it's only getting more and more ominous and dark and claustrophobic as the album continues, as it's almost now to the point where he's become so weakened, fatigued, tired and lost to the winds and waves of the sea that he probably feels like he's failed to slaughter the great whale, but it keeps him coming back for more, and the track reminds him to keep getting up and battle and forge on on his voyage. Hail Captain Ahab. Slay that fucking whale, brother, and claim your victory. This might sound strange, but these are the feelings and visions that you get from this album. It's literally transforming you into Captain Ahab as a listener, and you feel the, ex the experience and the journey down to its finest details. That's the beauty of artists who know how to convey their ideas, concepts, and emotions in the fucking sound. So let's check out some of The Hunt right here on Music of Destruction.
and we are back. Now Ahab are absolute masters at this and their idea to create the unique genre Nautic Funeral Doom Metal was genius guys and this one will be one I will be listening to for years to come. Now closing out this mammoth of an album is the track Ahab's Oath and I can't think of a better way to close out such an intense journey and aesthetic masterpiece of true artistic expression and relevance to this topic. Now why this band hasn't been more talked about in the metal community, I'll never fucking know. This is a funeral doom metal masterpiece, Closer, and it cements this as the final chapter of this journey into your mind and every sense of your being, as the atmosphere is going to keep you coming back for years and years. It's so hard to believe that an album of this magnitude slipped by me up until now, and I only heard Ahab last year. But I absolutely love Funeral Doom Metal, and this track is a hell of a closer. It's captivating, mesmerizing, dark, ominous, thundering, and truly remarkable in what it accomplishes. But that could be said about this whole album. And I honestly think this is never going to be matched again. This is a fucking true masterpiece of Nautic Funeral Doom Metal. The final verdict for Call of the Wretched Sea from Ahab is going to get a 10 out of 10, guys. Bye this fucking album now if you don't have it you will not regret it you can get it off of ebay it's pretty easy to find and hey guys if you're new make sure you subscribe turn on the bell so you don't miss anything follow me on twitter and instagram at music of destruction the seed episode 27 the history of death metal part 3 up right now working on a new podcast trying to come up with some ideas of what band i'm going to cover next i got so many i've got in mind i just have to pick one going to get started on that podcast this weekend for just five dollars a month you can get access to these podcasts and I want to thank you very much for your support. Colton James and myself are going to be doing our very first movie review. As soon as we get the equipment we need, we're working on that right now. We're deciding to hold off till we get everything. So let's check out a clip of what you can expect here on the new channel. Story guy. Looks like I lost it. There's no sign of the man. And we are back. Going to be doing movie and game reviews, so that's going to be awesome. Thank you guys very much for walking, watching. Walking. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you so much. We will see you for Album Ranking Wednesdays. I'm going to be doing my top uh, my Metallica Albums Ranked video. Sorry. Then on Thursday, we're going to be doing Top 15 Grindcore. Friday, going to be coming back with Metal Album Warfare. So have yourselves a great night. See you in the next video. Cheers, everyone.